So recently, with the news of everybody who permit, uh, who attended the premiere episode, the first episode of House of the Dragon season one, right, in LA, and all of the many other world premieres that have happened by now, or maybe by the time you're seeing this video, right before episode one comes out, with the reveal of the lore, right, basically confirming that Viserys has dragon dreams and that the whole reason why Aegon conquered Westeros was because, well, guess what? Why? Well, because here's the thing. George already confirmed that for the books in an interview that he did back in 2018. I've actually done a video, and it's linked down below in the description, that explains all of that. But in this video, I want to explain uh, a few different things, mostly relating to dragons, about this show and what it could reveal for TV show universe canon confirmation, but also potentially for the books because george has helped a lot with this series at least as much as he can we all know he's writing winds of winter and winds that is coming well, please if you haven't already slap a like on this video if you're enjoying my content and then also this is the most important part make sure you're subscribed and then you turn those notifications all the way on because the show's going to be dropping soon and that way you'll get an alert every single time i drop a video re either reviewing the episode or breaking down a particular scene that was insanely crazy or really good to watch Alright, so the first thing that I think that this series, House of the Dragon, could potentially explain further upon that we haven't really gotten much information of um, in, obviously, the main series. So that's a Game of Thrones, a Clash of Kings, a Storm of Swords, a uh, Feast for Crows, and Winds of Winter. Just kidding, just kidding, Dance with Dragons. <laughs> and then, obviously, Winds of Winter and then A Dream of Spring, right? So... What's been revealed in those books that have been out, the last one came out in 2011, uh, what's been revealed in those books, plus also World of Ice and Fire and Fire and Blood Part 1. All of the information that we have from there doesn't really give us much on dragon breeding. Now, if you want, I've done a video, I think it was within the past six months, and several videos within the past two years, like since the show has been announced, about how I think that dragons, basically, to summarize it right here in this video, dragons... Of old, so the original Valyrian shepherds, uh, before the Freehold was formed, so the Freehold is basically a mock-up of the Roman Empire. If uh, you're unaware what ancient Rome is, well then, that's basically what the, Val the Valyrian Empire becomes. But before that, they were shepherds. So, a lot of people think that, uh, a lot of common folk will say that in Westeros and in Planetos and Eastos, right? They think that they were kind of just given dragons... And they tamed them because they had special abilities. That's why their hair is silver and gold, right? It's described many different ways, but for the most part, the most awesome Targaryens have, like, hair that looks like precious metals. Um, but because of that, and also in the books they have purple and different shades of purple eyes, right? They mastered dragons. But when you read Fire and Blood and A World of Ice and Fire, you realize the maesters, who are the more learned men in this story, realized that the dragons had to be bred from pre-existing creatures. For instance, there's an existing creature named a wyvern, who is literally a dragon, but it can't breathe fire. So, there's this other creature named a fireworm, and there's multiple reasons why maesters think that um, the uh, wyverns were bred with fireworms to make dragons, mainly because the wyverns can't breathe fire, but they're sometimes as big as dragons, sometimes bigger, right? Um, but fireworms can, and fireworms existed in the mines of Valyria when the Valyrian uh, shepherds were mining uh, out, you know, gold and different precious metals, right? Fireworms would be existing alongside their slaves, and it was initially thought that because they are very similar to dragons in different ways, not only because of the way they look, but also they can breathe fire, they can eat through molten rock, right? It's believed that the two of them was used uh, to create different types of dragons. Now, in my opinion, one of the ways that they made dragons for specific things, i.e. colors, right, is by interbreeding the dragons. So, like, we turned a Shih Tzu all the way, if you go all the way back, it was initially a wolf. So the Valyrians probably did very similar things to that. Initially, they have all of these different types of dragons that are born in a clutch of eggs from these uh, initial wyverns, and their DNA is mixed in too, along with blood magic. I'll get into the area Targaryen stuff uh, later on in this video, but hang on, or area Targaryen, sorry. But initially, they probably had dragons of all different colors, and they also probably had dragons that were multiple colors, like Daenerys' dragon. So they were probably a red and black dragon was very common. So they probably bred them to be more specifically red, because red dragons are way more ferocious. And my given example of that in book canon is, spoiler alert, 
uh, spoiler warning. This is a big spoiler warning for the show. It's obviously going to happen. Um, Caraxes survives its fight with Vagar initially and pulls itself ashore and then dies on the shore of the God's Eye. So it was able to take out a dragon that's twice its size and we're going to see Vagar very soon. Right? So I think red dragons specifically were super interbred to be all the way red and that's what we have with Caraxes. That's why you have that temperamental, unpredictable uh, behavior and that super Targaryen incestual ADHD. It's crazy. And then another example of this is black dragons, right? They're bred for size. They're meant to be tanks. Like when you see one, its shadow lingers over cities. Like Drogon's nickname in the books is the, the wing shadow. And the main reason why is because he fucking he covers out the sun when he flies over. So black dragons are massive. And yes, Drogon actually has a bit of red coloring scale. So it's going to show you that eventually when he does... Well, he's already done uh, some type of damage, mostly to cattle, and there is potentially a little girl that he could have killed, but there is also a suspicion that Daenerys has that the farmer who brings in his little girl, that happens in the TV show too, could uh, be lying about the situation, right? But we haven't really seen Drogon's full potential yet. we just seen him save Daenerys from the uh, Daznag, right? The pits where everybody's fighting. I don't have time to get into that in this video, but continuing on here. Black dragons are tanks, and red dragons are meant to be, like, skilled warriors. Like, they're special assassins assassins sent in through previous Valyrian wars, and another example of this may be, or another example of another type of colored dragon may be uh, Aegon II's dragon, Sunfire, right? Said to be the most beautiful dragon ever seen in Westeros. Likely one of the more beautiful ones from Valyria, right? So Aegon II has this dragon that he flies around. We haven't seen any images of it. We haven't really seen any concept art of it, and it's going to be magnificent. I can't wait uh, to see it, right? But that dragon was probably more bred for showy looks. But I'll tell you this. I don't really have to give a spoiler warning. I, I mean, I guess I kind of do. I'm not going to say what happens at the very, very end of this story, but I will say that Aegon's dragon Sunfire is pretty fucking tough. And then lastly about the whole dragon lore thing is we they could eventually talk about the first dragon, like where it came from. Like we've heard theories about how there was a second moon and it cracked open and then dragons poured from the sky, right? Like they mentioned that in the actual Game of Thrones TV show, right? But we could get some more specific stuff because in season one, Damon and Lena are going to go across the narrow sea. This happens in the books. I don't really have to give a spoiler warning because if you've been watching my videos for a while now, you know I've talked about this recently in my videos because I'm excited to see what happens. But basically, Damon goes to ruins of an old Valyrian fortress and he likely comes across a few books. In those books, he may discover things like how dragons were initially tamed, where they came from, how wyverns are related to them, how they're related to fireworms, and this is a good part to talk about Arya Targaryen. So Arya Targaryen, much like this guy, King Jaehaerys, is a grandchild of Aegon the Conqueror, the very first Targaryen to... Well, that's not true. He's not the first Targaryen. He's, he's, the, he's the one who conquered and united Westeros, though, so really, you could say he's the only one that counts. But anyway, Arya is a granddaughter of his, right? So initially, I guess, actually, Arya would be a great-granddaughter because her mother, Reyna, is the granddaughter, right? It's okay, okay. So, yes. Anyway, they're all so related, I can't really remember. But her mother, Reyna, develops a relationship with a woman known as Alyssa Farman. And Alyssa Farman and uh, Reyna and Arya uh, got along very well. There's uh, not enough time in this video to explain, but initially, in a, at a point in Fire and Blood, there's no POV chapters, right? So, earlier on... Um, before, like, a lot of what happens in this TV show goes down, uh, Arya Targaryen, well, actually, there's two things that I want to explain here, Arya Targaryen and the Fireworms, and then also Daenerys and her three eggs, and how it's related to this TV series, and how this show could potentially confirm it, right, by someone casually mentioning, oh, yeah, you remember those eggs that Alyssa Farman stole? I think I've seen them, right, because there's a, there's a character, Corliss, specifically in this show, who has been to a shy, which brings up all types of things that he could... That's probably why we have him uh, having these weird shaped skulls and these helmets, right? He's He's been to a shy, so he's he's seen most of the world, so he's probably got some very unique, unique artifacts. But he initially said he saw an old beat-up version of Sun Chaser. So, obviously, 
uh, Alyssa Farman did sail away with the three dragon eggs, and eventually they make it to this dude named Illyrio Mopatis, who gifts them to Daenerys. They're fossilized at that point, and I think this is confirmed because Jaehaerys even says this in Fire and Blood, like, if these three stolen eggs... Oh yeah, let me back up a bit. The reason why Alyssa Farman stole the eggs from Reyna is because they had a fallen out where Alyssa wanted to leave, basically, and Reyna said, no, I don't want to do that, and Alyssa... Uh, uh, Reyna, rather, was aware that everybody wanted to use her for her dragons, and she was unaware that Alyssa stole three dragon eggs. Obviously, she later finds out, but those dragon eggs were stolen from uh, Dragonstone. And I, I won't reveal this part, but potentially we will see the dragon who birthed all of Daenerys' dragons, but Illyrio Mopatis gets them eventually, and he gifts them to Daenerys at her wedding with Khal Drogo. Ooh, that was a mouthful. You guys said, I saw like several comments in my video that I did yesterday uh, where people were saying to leave in the rambling part. And I, I like it because it really kind of allows me to explain more of what's happening in the books. And I know a lot of you people um, watching this video know about what happens in the books, but it's just really fun to talk about that in these videos. Okay, so what happens to Arya, right? And Reyna um, is her mother, remember I was just talking about Reyna and Alyssa, uh, Arya ends up leaving, she initially wants to go with Alyssa, but Reyna's like, no, you can't, so obviously, Reyna can't stop Alyssa, they definitely had a lesbian relationship, right, obviously, at the time, they couldn't be that open about it, but most people knew about it, anyway, Arya is a moody teenager, she ends up drunk, jumping on Valeria on the Black Dread's back, and disappears for a while, and it's rumored they went to the ruins of Valyria, dragons, Especially, Valerion the Black Dread was around before Valeria was destroyed. So he arrived on Dragonstone with the Targaryens. So, he kind of was just returning to home. And when he when he got there, he probably uh, lost track of Arya for a bit of time. Arya Targaryen. And it's a funny name. And uh, But George has pretty much used all the different variations of different A names for Targaryens. But basically, she gets, she gets lost... In my opinion, it's not confirmed in the books. Remember, there's no POVs. But she gets attacked by some fire necromancing wizards, and they, or maybe there's just fireworm eggs, and she accidentally eats them, thinking there's some sort of a bird egg, and they get in her body, and she can't control uh, Balerion. Obviously, he's the biggest dragon of all time. We see his skull in the teaser, right? So he eventually takes her back. She eventually gets control, and when she does, this is the terrifying part. She's burning from the inside out, and when the fireworms finally make it out, when they put her in an ice bath and she dies, the, the, the fireworms have faces on them. Human faces. So this obviously confirms, going all the way back to why the fuck I even started talking about this, this confirms the blood magic part that has to happen between wyverns and fireworms to make them dragons. And this show hopefully confirms at least a small increment of that. Right? There's a chance when Damon and Lena go to old Valeria. Alright, now this seems like a good point to, to rock this video up. Um, thank you all so, so much for watching and listening this far. Uh, please, slap a like on this video, and like I said, the most important thing that you can do right now is subscribe. Thanks for watching. My name's Mark, and a super special thank you to my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash your home reviews. You've seen them playing right now, and also at the beginning of this video in the intro, right? Where I have that dramatic music, like... That's from Light of the Seven. That's where Cersei blows up the Sept of Bela, the crazy bitch. Right? She's going to do something like that in Winds of Winter. It's probably going to be even more, and it's definitely going to be even more crazy. Thanks for watching. Alone, Nathan, Zeldriza, Spustari, Ixostar, Stau.